In this video, we're going to talk about a little bit of everything while my hair is drying in the sun. We're going to talk about um, the seasons, why they're forgotten, the seasons according to the natural cycle of things, which this is a very busy chart, but this right here is October 31st, pronounced so on, and it marks summer's end in the new year. All right? So, it also marks the time when the veils are thinning. So these are the veils of our perception as well. So that means we are able to perceive more about what's hidden in the darkness. And then winter solstice is going to be the longest night of the year, the shortest day, the greatest amount of darkness, because that actually marks midwinter. Midwinter, okay? Just like <laughs> the summer solstice, right across from it, is actually midsummer. What do we see on our linear calendars brought to us by the rulers? Ruler, 12 inches or ruler. <laughs> see? So humanity has been duped into falling for false cycles as well as false religions. Religion, etymology, the word religion. To yoke, to take back by law. Words are spelling. Also, uh, I'm gonna break it to you. Those, those nasty individuals that were through popple Bula, P-A-P-A-L, Bula, B-U-L-L-A, -L -L which was a lead stamp document distributed by the Roman Catholic Church in the Vatican, the Vatican City, which, by the way, type in to your little search bar, the Vatican City is a walled city. Nobody can get in, nobody can get out, except through this gate or something. It is actually a wall city, stone, high, high stone. I walked around the whole entire thing. It took hours. I almost killed my boyfriend at the time, who ended up marrying him. And I had an opportunity to kill him in his sleep, but I just, you know, it wasn't worth the time in the, in the, in the can. I didn't want to kill him. Cheers to living. Life is, li is for the living and for, the, for us to live it. So, Vatican is a nasty, nasty place filled with all kinds of catacombs, and it's filled with all of the Greek uh, and Roman statues of the gods and goddesses, which used to be in the Pantheon, which is no longer there in Rome. The Pantheon is a circular building with a hole in the ceiling when the sun comes through so that any given time of day the light that comes through hello sun sun gazing the light that comes through is going to um go and point to a certain god or goddess right well this is my space this is my library that's some artwork i've done See? Isn't that sweet? Because <laughs> I am. So my hair is drying and I'm talking to you. Okay, so we just hit a big um, shift in human consciousness. More people seem to be getting that something's not quite right here. And then we're all looking at who do we listen to? Who do we believe? What YouTube channel has it? What YouTube channel doesn't have it? I mean, I went on YouTube and searched. What the fuck is going on here? Um, because I had been playing along with, not really playing, but paying attention to things like Barbara Masiniak. Okay, all right. If this isn't a bunch of asshole Pleiadians, I don't know what is. I don't know what. Eat the sun, take it in. These guys are like, look at how much I've studied her. It's like, bringers of the earth was the first one. 
And then I believe Bringers of the Dawn was the second one. And then Family of Light. The same thing she was saying in the 90s, they're still saying. But the deal is... Um, they have truth hidden in the bullshit. Uh, at the same time, the Pleiadians... There's some, there's some devious stuff going on with them. It's like, grow fat with love. Fill yourself up with love. There are frequencies coming to assist you. We are always there rooting you on. But this is your journey. This is your journey. Your world may appear baffling. He may feel that there's so much to integrate and wonder. How could I make sense of it all? You can... You will. You must. <laughs> but then they tell us, you will be able to figure it out when you discover one of your greatest abilities. You are creator. You. So you create your life. There is no one that's going to give you permission. self sovereignty begins by recognizing yourself as a sovereign being. No one's going to come around and say, you're the ruler of your life. Bing! Uh-uh. It's up to you to do that. It's up to you to be the ruler of your life. Um, and then they go on. Your ultimate destiny is to turn the whole world into a love uh, frequency. Uh-huh. I don't think so. Not all the stuff going on. Um, it's not easy to do however it is done, particularly at the beginning of one age and the end of another. All right? You like to be told what to do. Okay, this, this is where their shit's correct. You, human, you like to be told what to do. This is page 39 in this book, Family of Light. <laughs> you like to be told what to do. You serve the Internet and you and have no idea that the ideas you are fed lock you in limited thinking. Uh-huh. The ideas you are fed. Here, have some cue. Have some cue. Get a cue. Get a, get a clue. <laughs> cue is poo-poo. And I, I tuned into that. I put my pulse to it. I was like, okay, this is a council of people, more than, and one of them or two of them must be from extraterrestrial origin, non embodied, and whoever these humans are, I don't trust them because if this coming through uh, the channel that is coming through, and it's not coming through my own channel, my own body, my own inner knowing, which we're going to get to, then it can't be true. So I watched um, Jordan Sadler grow up on the internet. He started off with his little whiteboard, and here he is, as, as young as my son. And I'm like, oh, look at this. It's, it's so great to see these young'uns, like, getting it together and, and like, rocking the world with their information because they sleuth around and, and uh, get to the bottom of the information that they can find on the internet. Okay? On the internet. Um, I once freeze framed, not Jordan, Jordan Sather, but this was back when I was listening to um, John Paul or Paul John or whatever his name was, this English bloke that stands in front of a map and talks. He uh, is right up there with the controlled opposition narrative, alternative news, along with um, that fat, angry guy that yells and screams. and He's been found out. I don't remember his name. But they were back, I was listening to them in 2014, uh, when I was like, this was the alternate media, before I realized they were full of crap too. Because I freeze-framed it on a picture they had of wars going on in Syria and Middle East, everything, fucking A's always like being blown up there. And there was a woman laying down and there was an infant beside her. It wasn't a real infant. I zoomed in. It was a plastic doll. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to pay attention to all the things. Actually, you don't have to pay attention. But you, you, if something's being fed to you, here. This is connect the dots. You're connecting the dots. You see it? Look how Millennia's dress is the same color as, like, who the fuck cares? <laughs> you, yourself, and you, my friend, are going to be the one that... In this game of life, game of life, because it is a game. It's a game to them, the fuckers that have been fucking with us for millennia. 
See, okay, we live a lifetime, and we don't even live a hundred years. So the stuff goes down. They rewrite his story. That's why it's called history. They can't lie to you. They can't. They can't lie to you. Therefore, they tell you it's his story. Let's see if there's anything interesting in here. <laughs> Your world leaders have been acting like rabble-rousing, multidimensional wild things <laughs> for centuries. Without this darkness outrageously preposterously trashing every single one of your values and boundaries, you would never awaken. So what these guys are saying to us, they're trashing the world, they're fucking kids and then murdering them to get their energy and adrenaline. Um, and all of this so that we can be outraged and then wake up? That's messed up, okay? So... And then, oh, here, here she goes. This is page 153, Family of Dark and the Family of Light book. Reptilian beings have been ruling behind the scenes for eons, placing puppets in front of you as their messengers. Yeah, all world leaders. These puppets often do not understand that they are possessed and taken over by the massive manipulators. Sometimes when they do discover that they are part of so immense and grotesque a plan, they feel shrunken and shriveled. Even though they may be popes, presidents, kings, queens, and others of prestige and power. Epstein. They recognize that they are nothing more than mere tools. Taken over because they made a home for these forces through perversions, lies, their attachment to sex, and their lust for material objects. So your world is full of darkness. A different version today as versions go, but no, but no different in its impact than the lessons that the darkness assists you to learn in all the ages. I mean, come on, man. So they're telling us this stuff, and when she wrote this book and I read it, I lent it out to a friend, and that woman gave it back to me, and she goes, I don't think this way. I'm like, okay, Pollyanna, play the glad game all you want. The fact is, we've been manipulated for centuries. Copyright 1999, Barbara Messignac. Okay? Why am I bringing this up? Okay? T to share with you that we have to um, do our own learning now. So let's get back to the natural cycle of things. Let's get back to understanding ourselves in the context of what our forefathers actually did, which was to celebrate the earth. Celebrate the earth, okay? Just get a book like this. Explore a magical world because you are magic. We are the magus. We are the magi. So the magi, what is that? Magi, magus. So you are the magicians. The magicians are the pagans. Why were we called pagans? We were called pagans because we were driven out of the cities into the pagus, P-A-G-U-S, or P-A-G-A-S, which was a Latin word for countryside because the cities were no longer safe, because if you lived in the city, you had to conform to religion. You had to go to church. If you didn't go to church, they would come by and chop your hands off or kill somebody or something or bash your baby's brains in. Whatever they did through intimidation and coercion, they did it, okay? So Life Magic, get this book, The Power of Positive Witchcraft. Start learning a thing or two about magic because black magic is being done against you. And by the way, Christmas is actually a holiday that was actually one of the most evil fucks that ever, ever roamed the earth in a possessed body. Um, and that's what that little Bill Nay chick was sacrificed to. <laughs> Right before our very eyes and ears and on news and everything like that. And then all that alarm experience, they just dragged that thing out. They sucked people's energy. Nom, 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 nom. They ate it and ate it and ate it. It's called loosh, my friends. It's called loosh. So get into the sun, take some sun into your eyes. Do the rainbow eyelashes. Okay, why do I know what I know? I'm going to tell you what I know. I know th certain things based on my own experience. 
One of them was taking the Christ light into my heart, which wasn't didn't have Christ in it. Long story short, I did this meditation with somebody back when I was checking out the Pioneer Girls, and I just went to this one meeting for the cookies because I like them. I like cookies a lot, real ones, and um, somebody had baked them. They weren't like Toll House cookies from a... They were real. Like somebody actually followed a recipe and made real cookies. They weren't, you know, that kind that you get um, at the store that some machine stamped out. They have no chi in them. No chi. So um, I did the meditation and then the Christ light came in and it whoo, filled up. And I got instant knowing. And then I, I got the instant knowing so much that when I went to church, I knew they weren't telling us the truth about what Jesus actually said. Also, Jesus is long gone. I don't care what people say. He's an ascended master. He took off. He ascended. He was showing us the way out of this, like, earth prison. We're on a prison planet. So it's sort of like an escape room. How do we get out of here alive? How do we get out of here? By protecting your energy. By recognizing your energy as an essential component of your life. Okay? So, we know all the stuff's going on the planet that's not cool. It's going to continue going on. And it's up to you to actually create a life worth living because you are creator and you are sovereign. You're sovereign, my friend. Create a journey of your life worth living. Do something worth living. How do I do that? I'm getting I'm getting back to the old holidays, the whole old celebration, celebrating the earth, recognizing uh, the lunar cycle every month. It's full moon time. The light in, in of the moon allows us to see what's in the darkness. And then, okay, some say the moon's a, a false construct that's been dragged here by aliens, and now it serves as a soul catcher. And it also is a frequency dish that, that sends icky stuff at us. Okay, whether it does or it doesn't, I don't even care. It's there. I have to deal with it. So I'm going to use it to suit my purposes. I'm going to use the full moon as a way of shining light on things that I would like clarity on. So I'm a shining light on the fact that you will not see any of the pagan celebrations, which wasn't pagan, by the way. It was the white witchcraft uh, that got wiped out while the dark forces were allowed to live and celebrated. And Christianity is a cover-up poster child for cannibalism. That was the other thing. Here, drink my blood. Jesus didn't say that. Here, eat my body. Jesus didn't say that. I know, because when I took in the golden light, I had an awakening. Yeah, I did. I had an awakening. The other thing that I had was, even though some people, it is a psyop, meaning it's a psychological operation that's meant to make you feel frustrated because you don't have that experience and you want it, the twin flame. So this is going to be 2009. I'm coming back on an airplane. I'm on flight 1113, sitting in 11A. And next to me, 11B, is this guy. And we get into this conversation. And the next thing you know, he's putting his hand out. And I'm putting my hand on top of his hand. And then my body, like right here, is like, it's pulsing. It goes pulse, pulse. You could see it. Pulse, 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 pulse. He's like, what is this? And I don't know. And then suddenly we're transported into this bubble. And I sense all that there is, that time is timelessness, that we've always been, that we always will be, that we always, we were there at the beginning of time and we will continue because we are loveless and joy. We are. That's what we are. Our truth, the truth of our being is love, bliss, and joy. However, love is not going to get you through this lifetime unless you're also a badass protector of your own force field. Don't let anybody steal your joy. So when I had that experience, I knew that there were no intermediaries between me and Divine Source, of which I wasn't even aware of where it came from. It, it was an isness and all-pervasiveness that I just felt. I felt it. I knew it. I experienced it. Nobody told me what it was. And when I was in my seat, my little voice inside of my head said, that's your twin flame. You're having a twin flame experience. It wasn't sexual. It was sensual. 
and it gave me a kundalini experience. It woke me up. I left a marriage that was loveless, that was abusive, um, and all that good stuff, and have been on this truth of my of my life ever since, even a big, 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 big way. So, what kind of things do I do? Yoga, dancing, um, sun gazing. You know, you take it in. You're not looking at it directly and blinding yourself. You're taking it in because light is food and you're light and you're photonic. So therefore, take it in, take it in, take it in. Learn to love this life that you're in. Um, what else did I want to talk to you about other than, if you notice on your calendar, there are no pagan holidays. Um, traditions will never be talked about. But every last F in Christian, Muslim, and Jewish one's on there now. <laughs> Even in my, uh, okay, let's introduce this. I don't have any makeup on yet, but cause I'm, I'm drying my hair in the sun. All right, I get one of these. It's the Farmer's Almanac. Now, there's some stuff that's going to go down that's going to be really interesting in 2020. So January 21st, which is what we consider what? What is January 21st? It's the, the sun moves into... Aquarius. So to me, the 2020s, January 21st, is essentially a sign that we're moving into the age of Aquarius, finally. And we're going to be then going in, um, to February, and February 1st, the Festival of Lights, <laughs> oh, Christmas, which is actually a, um, oh, here it is, it's Mismith. Okay. It's the sacrifice of the white child, um, the evil woman god, Miss Smith, black magic. They called it pagan, it's not. It's not, this is black magic. Look that up. That was the evil ones that escaped being killed. All right, we're the magi, look up magi, look up magus, look up magic. Um, the magi equals white magic. And they visited Jesus Christ when he was born, according to the myth. But we're not going to talk about that. Let's see if I had anything else here that was interesting. No. We're the, we're the intended magi. We're, we are the magicians. And um, we've been under a spell. We've been under a spell, a dark magic spell. Because they kept killing our ancestors that knew a thing or two. <laughs> so as you wake up, like I am... Through light, through light practice, through taking it in, you know, and um, not falling for, oh, the codes are coming to you. We're sending codes, we're sending codes of light to you. No, you take your own codes. <laughs> You're responsible for yourself. You're self-sovereign. Just like, I awaken my higher divine self. I awaken my higher self. I invite my higher self in. More and more of my higher self is awake, alive, conscious, giving me information, making my life easier, providing opportunities, making fun, luck, and, and, and like more joy happen in my life. <laughs> Speaking of which, my narcissist boyfriend and I are back together again, and I'm so excited. So then we're going to go into February, which is in bulk. All right, that is spring. Not March 21st. The vernal equinox is the middle. <laughs> it's the equal day, equal night. So, you see, you may go, oh, what's the big deal? Well, if you, if you take a person away from their, their natural cycle, you take them further and further away from their natural instinct, and you take them further and further away from their natural knowing. Have they succeeded? So yeah, now you know that December 25th is when a, a white child is sacrificed, it's evil, and it's from this Roman god Mismith, who's an a-hole. Let's see if I have anything else here interesting. Oh yeah! Okay, okay. So it's the Mithraic New Year, and birthday of Mithras, which is male dominance plus fem abusive females. And they had, like, Festival of Natalis Invicti, whatever that was. In other words, Natalis, which is, like, Natal Invicti. Uh, 
and then the initiates knew a handshake. So I'm not sure what all of this is. Maybe somebody else can figure it out. But I have this sort of thing. I'm not going to do research on it just yet because I'm trying to figure it out who were the bad guys and who were the good guys. And it seems to me that the bad guys have been writing history for us. Okay, the bad guys have been writing history. And screenshot, take a look at that and let me know what you think. But yeah, December 25th, all along we've been told um, that they stamped Christian holidays on pagan ones and that pagans were into sacrifice and and, and I realized that that wasn't true um, in my bones but then now that I know that, that there has been all along black magicians operating in the dark Jeanne Bonet was my wake up call when, when she was killed look at um, really graceful Really Graceful's, go to Really Graceful channel on YouTube, type in Jen Bonet, um, and uh, you will put the dots together. The real dots, the real dot to dot. <laughs> I don't trust everything anybody says anymore because if it's on the internet, if it's allowed to be on the internet, it's either way under the radar or um, the powers that be want you to know because when you watch certain videos that alarm you, you exude honeydew, loosh, for the invisible a-holes, which still are here to some degree. Or you lose your energy, you lose some sort of your energy into dismay, and it goes into the energy field, because energy, we are generators. We're energy generators. And we're, we're told that we lose energy as we age, and because guess why? The human being is programmable. You can program yourself into saying, the sun is regenerating me. It's regenerating my eyesight. It's regenerating every cell in my being. Every cell in my being is being filled with this pure light. This light is regenerating and healing me. I am receiving healing light. Every fiber, every ounce, every cell of my body is filled with this regenerative healing light and so it is and you can lay down or whatever if you want I'm drying my hair so get yourself a farmer's almanac um, so in the future I'm, I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about like what you can do to help your body um, I recommend but I'm not a doctor or a nutritionist zeolite zeolite helps cage um, the heavy metals that are in the air to flush out of your system by way of poop, pee, ex <sighs> breathing, and sweat. Uh, colloidal silver, this is a nasal spray because that stuff makes my nose sort of have a sinus condition because I live near a city. Vitamin D3, this is from Metagenics.com. What's so great about them? D3 is very, very important. Uh, again, this isn't the medical advice. And I'm going to go into a nutritional thing about diatomaceous earth. Um, iodide, chlorophyll, and stuff like that. Oh, this is the biggie, boron. Why is that a biggie? All right, because they put fluoride in your water, unless you have a well water, because boron is essentially missing in our earth, because there's a rise in degenerative disease and connective tissue degradation, and guess what? There's your prevention. So I get this from traceminerals.com, traceminerals.com. So let's just leave off there, and um, I'm glad that you stuck around and listened um, and uh, can contribute to this conversation. So let's pull a card. I got these when I was visiting my daughter in Brooklyn, and... I decided that these were going to be my divination cards. So let's clear ourselves, align with higher self. You align with higher self by putting your hand on your heart. And you can go into the galactic center through the sun portal. And 
and I am going to ask for a card of the day that can best illustrate um, what it is that would be most helpful to be in my consciousness. And a card jumped, and it's card 16. Doesn't that look hopeful? Let's see what this is all about. In my little book here, um, what does it say? I'm going to prop that right there. You can't see it, but I can. So, oh wow, it's a guy holding a cross. Okay, this is an ancient symbol that became relig religious-fied. I'm wearing it to reclaim it. I also found this. <laughs> I find jewelry. I once found two, two, neck, uh, two earrings side by side on the beach. Oh, these? My daughter gave these to me. Aren't those beautiful? So let's read number 16, which is a 7. Um, and we'll look at 17 and, uh, excuse me, 7 in my, my other book. So let's see what is suggested that we actually keep in mind today, shall we? Um, stars. That's right. You're a star. I'm a star. So the nouns are guidance, technology, metasis, hope, clarity, ideas, orientation, universe, astrology, Signs, okay, that's what I want to talk to you about. Why did they make astrology? They, being the guys who write history, they made astrology for wackadoos because it actually is what they follow to do their nefarious deeds with the most amount of power. Yeah? Um, so basically, it's a Celtic cross navigation tool held high. And he's plotting a course based on the stars. And there's a silver crescent of a moon highlighting that this is the start of something new and wonderful. So yeah, hi everybody, this is the start of something new and wonderful. Our awakening, or our like getting it together. Meaning, we have the ability to use our clarity and guidance. And we can pay attention to this, um, now that we're in, we're in a waning period, but the waning period and the waxing period have different things. But you're going to follow the guidance of the spirit. Of spirit with a capital S. Your own. Um, you know, we're able to use clarity to see beyond the everyday. And guidance is always with you when you actually tune within. So uh, how do you do that? Like I said to you, use the sun. The aid. Use the food of the sun. Just keep... Taking it in, I'm aligned with a higher self. My higher self, my higher dimensional self, isn't limited to this little body with this brain capacity that's like, yeah, and um, whatnot. It's limitless. So one and six is seven. Seven is, is a number, and a number I'm going to read. So here we go, the masculine and feminine, the tetrahedron. If it's a um, three-dimensional thing, it's flat. If it's a fifth-dimensional, four-dimensional thing, you're um, able to step into it, and there's your Merkaba. Seven symbolizes perfect order, and it's also uh, higher learning, spirituality, and contemplation. So I'd say that was a pretty good card to get for today, wouldn't you? So we'll uh, read um, more, uh, express more, talk more, share more in the near future. In the meantime... <laughs> Uh, I am now officially um, back in with my partner, and I have the ring to prove it. So this is an ancient symbol, which shows my heart is closed off to any other man but him, in a romantic sort of way. And this one's gargantuan, which leads me to believe it must have been a man's ring. I mean, I can almost put it on my thumb. <laughs> And it's made in Mexico. And so I love things that are made from Mexico. And then he gave me this beautiful Wonder Woman bracelet. Because my other one broke. Let me show you my other one. My other one broke. I have to like have it resoldered. I'm going to find a silversmith that can actually take care of make Resize this ring. And put this together again. Because this is like my powerful bracelet. I love this thing. And it... Bummer, huh? And then, he, look, transformation. This is Navajo jewelry. Don't you love it? 
So we'll leave off there. Please share with me what you will. And um, uh, the seeker has already found what it's looking for. It's the treasure of yourself. So remember that. Remember that you're a treasure. That you're the one that has the real crown. Um, see? And, uh, you know, love yourself, but protect your energy. You don't have to put love through a deity, which is this going to get gobbled up and used for their reasons, when you can have it for yourself. Dance. Dance a little dance. Get down tonight. Soon.